Module 3, Neurodiversity. Neurodiversity has become very popular within organisations over the last couple of years. There has been a trend to implement various programmes which have aimed to allow neurodiverse individuals increased opportunities within a workplace setting. Neurodiversity refers to the natural range of differences in human brain function. If we put this into the workplace context, it's an area of diversity and inclusion that refers to alternative thinking styles such as autism, ADHD or dyslexia. Through using the term neurodiversity, organisations have been able to recognise the many strengths that neurodiverse people have, such as visual spatial thinking, problem solving and heightened creative skills. Essentially, if we can get people with different backgrounds, perspectives and experiences together, it's only going to make a team more creative and innovative. Traditionally, there's been a lack of understanding and awareness that has led to office space, management practices and hiring processes being designed for neurotypicals. There have also been cultural factors that have limited our ability to understand neurodiversity. Being able to include those that are neurodiverse requires a conscious effort by the organisation and all colleagues, which is why being proactive and learning more about neurodiversity is so important. Just remember that many people who are in fact neurodiverse may not have had a formal diagnosis. This is particularly true for older people, women and those from ethnic minorities. This means that on an organisational level, there's a great chance that there are significantly more neurodivergent people than you might currently know of. Creating awareness around neurodiversity has the potential to not only promote a culture of inclusion, but also to allow staff to find out more about themselves and perhaps develop new ways of working so that they are more comfortable at work. Reasonable adjustments in the workplace. There are various inexpensive reasonable adjustments that can be made to allow neurodiverse individuals to perform to the best of their ability. The reasonable adjustments that we recommend are in line with particular thinking styles. Autistic reasonable adjustments. Remember not to take their manners personally. For example, an autistic individual might feel uncomfortable maintaining eye contact. They may seem distant and aloof or they might not attend social gatherings at work. Allow autistic individuals to skip team days and large meetings if they feel uncomfortable to participate. Allow them not to adhere to a dress code if you have one in your organisation, as they can be overly sensitive to materials and only be able to wear certain clothes. Provide special equipment such as noise blocking headphones or earplugs if they might be overly sensitive to sounds. This might be especially relevant if you are working in an open office space. Dyslexic reasonable adjustments. Ensure that your internal documentation, such as fire safety procedures, data protection policies, or instructions on how to use equipment, is friendly for dyslexic individuals to read. This might entail the use of shorter sentences, clear paragraphs, larger print, or even better, video instructions. If the person is struggling to understand certain instructions, it would not help much if you repeat the same thing. It's better to try provide examples that support your message with visual imagery or have visual instructions. It's also helpful to provide grammar and spelling checking software or an assistant who can help check documents produced by a dyslexic individual. ADHD reasonable adjustments. It can be useful for an ADHD individual to break down a project into smaller subtasks to keep focused and motivated. It's helpful to use a visual calendar and project timeline to assist with time management. Give them permission to fiddle, doodle or use fidgeting toys at work and in meetings as this normally helps keep them focused on the task at hand. Allow for frequent breaks if they're working on something routine and tedious.